folks, and welcome back to Bougie Comfort Food. I'm your hostess, Mary Landry, and today we are doing sliders two ways. Now, I know some of you may be saying, wow, why didn't you put these up for Super Bowl? These would have been perfect. Well, I got sick. So I apologize for being away for the last two weeks, but we're going to catch up now. So we're going to do sliders two ways. Now, one of the ways that we're going to do them are what, what I call big kahuna sliders. And the other ones are going to be mushroom and Swiss sliders. So let's get started. The genesis of all of this was just after Pulp Fiction came out, maybe about five years later, we were getting ready for a Super Bowl party. And we were like, what are we going to cook? And I was like, you know, in Pulp Fiction, they had Big Kahuna Burgers. And Samuel L. Jackson's character says, well, it's a Hawaiian joint. And I kept thinking, what would Hawaiian hamburgers be like? Well, the first thought that came up to me was... They'd have pineapple on them. So I took burgers and grilled them and then grilled some pineapple slices and they were a pretty big hit around our house. Now, for those of you who don't know anything about Pulp Fiction, you know, there are some out there. Um, it is a film by Quentin Tarantino. Now, in a, another film, which was From Dusk Till Dawn, that one's Robert Rodriguez, but they're buddies, and he used Big Kahuna Burgers in that one, too. George Clooney's character goes out and gets Big Kahuna Burgers and brings them back. So this is something that Quentin Tarantino made up for the films. Now, what we're doing today, I, you know, when I made these Big Kahuna Burgers, I put them on King's Hawaiian Bread buns. This was always my dad's favorite bread. And so he was always excited when he got to have King's Hawaiian bread. He used to buy the little round tin of it, and he would have loved these burgers. I'm telling you, he would. So um, what I did just now while we were talking is I sliced my buns in half, my rolls. For sliders, we're going to use King's Hawaiian rolls. You're going to take them, slice them in half so they turn into hamburger buns. Easy peasy. Now we're going to set those off to the side. Let me grab my pan. I always put mine into the oven so that they toast up a little bit. I find that it holds together a little bit better with that hamburger. But if you like them squishy, go for it. You do not have to put these in the oven. Now, right now, my french fries are getting ready because, like I said, we're eating burgers tonight, buddy. So, I have french fries in my oven currently, and these are going to go in second. They're going to go into a 350 oven for only 10 minutes. So, let's set those off to the side and get cracking. Now, in addition to the buns, you're going to need a pound of hamburger meat. Now, those buns, I have... 12 of them. Now I did 16 because I want to make them a little bit smaller and they're a little easier to portion that way. But if you're feeding a big crowd, go ahead and get two pounds of hamburger and just get the family size, the party size pack. That's 24 burgers. If your folks can't eat all that, you know, they're good second day too. All right. So, the next thing we're going to do, we've got our pound of hamburger, because I'm only going to do 16. Now, I'll tell you an interesting fact while I'm dividing my burger up. I need to divide it up into 16 pieces, because that's how many buns I have. So, I'm going to take it and divide it up. And while we're doing that, I'll tell you an interesting fact. Anyone who's ever worked at McDonald's, would know this fact, but I'm going to share it with y'all now. If you order hamburger, you know, like the hamburger cheeseburger from a Happy Meal, those are called 
10 to 1 burger patties. And the reason why, if you haven't already figured it out, is it takes 10 of them to make one pound. So you're getting a tenth of a pound of hamburger when you're getting that Happy Meal hamburger, okay? So we're gonna make 16 to ones. So it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, but that's okay. So I'm dividing it into fourths. I have my four, I divided it into fourths and now I'm dividing it into a second set of fours. And I'm gonna make little hamburger patties out of those, what, sixteenths of a hamburger? But that's the interesting fact. Now when you have quarter pounders at McDonald's, those are called four to ones because four quarter pounders make a pound. So that's your interesting fact of the day, factoid of the day, useless facts 101, right? All right, folks. So I've got them done and they look kind of like little meatballs at the moment, but we're gonna flatten them out and try to get them uniform in size. Now, if you see the size of the burger pat, if you bring it over to your bun, they're gonna shrink up, okay? So I'll bring one of these real quick and show you. See, it's right about the right size, but it's gonna shrink up. So what you wanna do is flatten it a little tiny bit more so when it does that shrink thing, it'll still fit on that hamburger bun, that roll that we're using as hamburger buns. All right. Now, you heard me say we're doing sliders two ways today. The other ones we're making are mushroom Swiss sliders. Now, if you choose to, you can also, you know, put you some bacon in the oven. Remember when we did omelets, we did baked bacon and showed you how to make baked bacon. So you can bake you some bacon in the oven and you can have bacon mushroom Swiss sliders. Now, doesn't that sound good? Woo! I could tear some of those up right now. My stomach's already growling, so we're right about dinner time. So I'm actually cooking at dinner time today for you guys. We're just going to keep on making burger pats real quick. Now, the way we make mushroom sliders is we're going to take sliced mushrooms. That's the other one of the other ingredients you're going to need. And you're going to need butter for those because you cannot put them down. They will stick and will not do happy things for you. I like to cook mine in butter, but you can use cooking spray or olive oil. You know, it's really up to your personal taste, but I love mushrooms cooked in butter. You could cook a whole pan of those and I would be ecstatic. I'd just sit there and nom nom nom. So, we're just going to keep on making patties real quick. The other thing that you're going to need for these big kahuna sliders is going to be pineapple. Now, you could go and get the, the ring pineapple, you know, Dole pineapple rings or whatever your great value brand, whatever. Um, and you can do those or you can do like I did today. I went in the produce section and grabbed a package of pineapple chunks. And I'm going to show you the, the pitfalls of pineapple chunks in just a minute. Let me finish making these burgers real fast. But, and you know, if you like a lot of meat, you can add more meat. There's nothing saying you couldn't make a whole little meatball and throw it on these and it wouldn't be terrific. If you want to season them, you can. You can just season them with salt and pepper if you're not very adventurous or you can use a seasoning blend. We have a new one in the house. It's called Holy Garlic. And that one is, um, a little bit strange, but it's got a little bit of spice to it. It's got a lot of garlic, of course, and it's a black seasoning. So it looks a little funky when you put it onto your food, but honestly, it's, it's a really great seasoning. We put it on chicken about a week ago, and that was pretty fantastic. Mm. Holy garlic, but... Um, I considered seasoning these with some holy garlic, but we're gonna go purist today and let people do their own thing. Now, of course, you can use mayonnaise, you can use mustard, Miracle Whip, ketchup, whatever you want in your sliders. 
Um, we usually do a uh, Miracle Whip and mustard on ours. And, it, and you might be thinking mustard and pineapple. Trust me, it works. The spiciness of the mustard and the, the blandness of the pineapple. Now, we are going to cook these pineapple chunks that I have. As soon as I get done doing these, I'm going to wash my hands real fast because I didn't put on gloves today. I'm going to wash my hands real fast and uh, cut up some pineapple. You want to cook your pineapple. Now, a lot of people who don't necessarily like fresh pineapple generally is because it has an acid in it that breaks down the tissue and breaks down uh, meat tissue. So basically, it breaks down the inside of your mouth. So a lot of people say, oh, I don't like pineapples, you know. That's why they don't like them. Now, when you cook them like I'm fixing to do, it actually makes them very sweet. And I'm gonna give my knife a quick rinse with some Dawn dishwashing soap, so give me two seconds, folks. And um, what you can do is you can, um, if you cook them, it changes the sugars in the pineapple, which affects those acids, which are what breaks down the tissue in your mouth. Now, in addition to all of that, you're going to need cheese. Yes, you can use sandwich sliced cheese. It's fine. But I like using, it's like a cheese tray from the big box store from Sam's Club. And what I like to do is take them, so you can see they're about double size for a cracker. They work great on a on um, club crackers though. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut those in half. So, that way, I've got a little pepper jack there. This is Colby Jack. And then I'm gonna take, I probably overcut my cheese, that's okay. It is not going to hurt a single thing if I have cut too much cheese. And I know some of you are probably in the background snickering saying, cut the cheese. But it's going to be okay. Alright. So, I've got some Pepper Jack, some Colby Jack, and some Swiss for our burgers today. And we'll put those off to the side. We've got our burger pats ready. We've got our mushrooms sitting right here, our sliced mushrooms. I've already got some pats of butter. And I told you we were going to discuss pineapple. Now, as you can see, it's just one of the little produce packs. You're going to look at your pineapple along the outer rim. That's the side that had the peel. And you're just going to take it and cut some pretty big slices. Because these hold up to some pretty big slices. Now, if you get one, see how this one has? You can see the little seeds in it. And it's got some like harder rus rusk edges. Those are because they did not trim it close enough away from that skin. And what happens is those little edges around those seeds are rougher. And they actually will tear up your mouth if you try to eat them. So, I always try to trim that little bit away. So, we're just going to throw us some... Pineapple slice. See, that one needs to be trimmed a little bit. We're going to just trim that away real fast. Right like so. And for those who are adventurous and think, I'll grow pineapples. It's seeds. Um, you probably don't have the climate for it, but if you do, go for it. Pineapples grow in sand. Um, I actually was fortunate enough, and so was my wife, actually. She went on a different trip. But when I was little, I went with my folks to Hawaii when we were coming back to the United States after living in Dubai. And so, we, um, we went through Hawaii, and we went out to the Dole Pineapple Fields and saw them growing those pineapples out in the sun and the guide runs out there with the machete and he 
walk, 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 real fast. And he served us up fresh pineapple, fresh out the fields. So that was fantastic. There is nothing like fresh pineapple right out the field. There is no flavor on pineapple like it. Canned pineapple cannot hold a candle to it. So, all right, folks. So now we've got our pineapple all sliced up. I've got several because I like it. Um, especially after it's been grilled and turned sweet on you. Woo, good stuff. All right. So I know you're thinking, well, normally you take everything away to the stove and we can't see anything. Today is your day. Today, we're going to do it on an electric griddle. And you can see mine has lots of love on it. It's clean. Don't get, don't get crazy on me. It is clean, but it is well loved and well used in my house for everything from pancakes to hamburgers. And today it is hamburgers. So we're going to turn on our griddle. I'm going to put it about 350 because you don't want it too, too hot. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start laying out those little patties. Now, like I said, we got 16 of them. So it's going to fill her up. Usually I try to cook to one side, cook meat to one side, and then do the pineapples and the um, mushrooms on the other side. Let's see if I can get it before it gets too hot for me to touch it. Because once it gets hot, there is no moving those patties. So you're going to lay out your patties. And they'll start sizzling here in just a minute because she's heating up. I can feel her already getting hot on me. If they don't want to slide once I set them down. These are not going to take long at all. Do not play around once you start cooking these. You basically are going to slap them on and turn them, turn them, turn them. That one has a little too much, so we'll put it on that one that didn't look like it had quite as much. You hear them already sizzling on me. All righty, last two. And we have enough left over here to where I can start putting my pineapples down. We throw this plate away. And get my hands a quick wash because don't want to cross contaminate. So that's why we always cook separate, okay? But you can cook these separate and still cook your mushrooms and and uh, pineapple off to the side. Now I just lay the pineapple on here. You can already hear it sizzle, see? Whew. Telling you folks, this is a winner. It's a favorite in our house. Now I've already got my um, french fries in the oven and we're going to get all of this going and have it all come out roughly at the same time. Ooh, two extra pieces, bonus for the chef. I didn't see a point in fighting them. Okay, let's get out a plate to put these on and finish. Now, once you flip these, you're gonna put your cheese on them once they cook for a few minutes. Don't throw your cheese right on it. That is an amateur mistake, and that's how you end up with a mess on your grill. But these are very easy to do this way, although you can put them in a skillet and do them. So they work out that way too. Now, as you can see, it's already starting to brown toward the bottom, and that's exactly what we want to see. So, your pineapple is not going to burn that easily. Now, you can put butter or cooking spray or whatever under them, but they don't have to have that. Because they have juice, see, they're not ready to turn yet. They have juice in them, so they'll keep themselves moist enough that you can get them off the grill. Once your burger patties are about halfway cooked, you'll see them brown halfway up. That's your time to flip. 
So, just give it a couple of minutes. I hope that you're enjoying this video and that you've enjoyed videos from us in the past. Please check out some of the other ones. We do have several, and we have several that are coming up. Um, I know I promised to show you these and probably pizza puffs before the Super Bowl, but like I said, I came down sick and the world grinds to a halt at that point. So, I apologize for those of you who are waiting on good tips for a uh, Super Bowl. I'm sorry if your party did not have something you were hopeful to show. They still needed a few more minutes on that side. Let's flip it back over. Now these, like I said, will cook fairly quickly. You can do them in a skillet. It's not a big deal. It's whatever you have handy, but my wife was uh, very sweet, and this was a birthday present to me two years ago. So, I like using my griddle. It makes my life worlds easier. All right, so you can see they're starting to get there, and you want them to do exactly what you want them to do when you're cooking them in a pan or on the grill. You want them to brown a little bit so that they hold their shape. And you want to just let them rest. Don't try to flip them too early. If you do, they will not be fully cooked. Unfortunately, for those of you who are persnickety and want like medium rare or rare, you're pretty much going to get them well. Sliders do not uh, bend to the will of medium or rare. You could probably slap them down, turn them, and turn them, and be done with it, but I wouldn't eat them. But, you know, takes all kinds. Whatever floats your boat, folks. Now, if you're enjoying these videos, and if you've checked out any other ones from our channel, think about giving us a subscribe. You just hit that notification bell down in the bottom corner. And that subscribe will tell you, and that notifications will tell you every time we upload a video. We do them fairly often. We uh, try to do at least one a week, unless I get sick and then we're kind of backed up. But that's okay, we're gonna get it rolling. Um, and I gotta flip my pineapple as soon as I'm done flipping my meat. And as you can see, my meat's almost done. We're just doing that last final cook on that side. And I like my skillet, my griddle, because I can take it and the grease will drain down in a little pan. Now, let's flip those pineapples. See that nice brown color on those pineapples? That is what we're looking for. That is how you know it is releasing those sugars. Caramelizing those sugars. Alrighty, let's get those ones flipped. Give them a quick flip. There we go. Alrighty. So as you can see, my burgers are almost done. We'll be pulling those up in a minute. How you know that they are done? They will quit oozing red, for one, and they'll quit bubbling up red. If they are not, if they don't have a crust on them, like you can see some of these have a crust on them, if some of them don't, you can always flip them back over and put them back down. It's no big deal. Now, once we get these uh, pineapple pulled, we're going to put our mushrooms down. They only take a few minutes to cook on this griddle. So... We're gonna keep her chugging. Ooh, I can't wait, it already smells so good in here. And when my uh, french fries come out, I can throw my buns in at 350 for 10 minutes, and they'll be nice and crisp, and they'll hold up to these hamburgers really nice. Now, as you can see, they're almost done. Woo, I'm fighting with wine bottles. Now you're probably wondering, woo, they can go through a lot of wine. No, no. My, uh, my in-laws are collecting wine bottles for me because one of the things we plan to do on the channel once spring hits 
is I'm going to sh show you how to do herb infused vinegars and herb infused olive oils. So those are gonna be something we're looking forward to in the spring. But for right now, I get to look like the look like a wino in the house. I take wine bottles if I can get them, and I take them and I wash them out really well, boil them out with boiling hot water, and then I take those and I will put um, the oil and the herbs. And everything in it. If you haven't had infused oils and vinegars, you do not know what you're missing in your cooking regime. So, let's go ahead and get that one a little bit longer. But this one's got a nice crust and sear on it. All right. The pineapples look like they're ready, so we're going to go ahead and whoops, lost one over the side, didn't I? I'm going to go ahead and throw them in the middle of here and get our butter down to do our mushrooms. These needed a few extra minutes, so that's why you saw me flip them. And whoop, lost one over the side again. That's the only problem with a griddle. You lose them over the side occasionally if you get too excited and throw them around. But it's gonna be okay. It's all gonna work out, folks. All right, so next we're gonna start putting down some butter. And you know that'll get cranking in a hurry. And what we're gonna do, once we got our butter sliding around here, and yes, it's in where the pineapple juice was, but it's okay, you're not gonna taste it, trust me. Or if you do, bonus. I don't know. All right, so we're just gonna take those sliced mushrooms, lay them out nicely on our griddle. Now I'm doing a ton of them because my wife is not a kahuna burger eater, but she does like the mushrooms on hers. So, just pick out some nice slices when you're doing this. Keep in mind your burger size. So you don't wanna to go too crazy with the huge mushrooms that sometimes show up in here. There we go. Do one more row. But this way, if somebody is not interested in the pineapple, they can enjoy mushrooms. All right, I think those burgers are about ready to come up. My mushrooms are sizzling away, as you can see. And we are gonna pull up our last burgers, get them laid out on this plate. Fred the cat has come over to see us. And if you like this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. That helps other people to find our channel and helps YouTube to know that people are interested in what we're posting. Like I said, if you hit the notification bell and subscribe to us, you'll know every time we upload a new video. We've got some doozies on here. We've got... Um, Mongolian beef and all kind of great stuff. Now, I usually set the cheese down on my burgers once I pull them because it's just as easy to do that. It may not melt fully, but it doesn't melt fully all the time when you're eating them at home either. So, I got a little Colby Jack, some Swiss. And I've got some pepper jack here. Oof. Put one back on that and put one back on that. We'll call it even and make the rest of the pepper jacks. So you can use, like I said, any kind of cheese that you like. It works out and the cracker cheese I find works pretty well. So we're gonna flip those mushrooms over. Woo, there's my french fries out. Flip those mushrooms over. You can see they get nice and a nice caramelization on them. You know that that butter has done its trick and it's in there. Put 
Look at those pretty mushrooms. I know, I know, I'm coming. I gotta get these french fries out and get my buns going. There we go. Those mushrooms are almost done. You see all those pretty mushrooms? Woo! We're gonna go ahead and turn off our griddle because it's not gonna hurt those mushrooms sit in that butter and finish getting all ooey gooey and yummy. See those pretty mushrooms? Woo! Ready for it. All right. Turn off that timer for my french fries. Pull them out. Turn the oven down because we don't need a 425 degree oven. We only need 350. And you only need maybe five to 10 minutes with it. Okay. So we're gonna throw our rolls in here. Put a timer on for 10 minutes and they'll toast up nice and crisp. All right, folks. We're about ready to pull those mushrooms off, aren't we? Woo, buddy. Telling you, if we had smell-o-vision, you'd go crazy right now. So, we're going to throw our mushrooms down here in the middle, just like we did our pineapples. And that is that. So, all that we have left is to toast our buns and put our sliders together. You're just going to take mayo and mustard, slather it on there, layer them down, make them look pretty. So, like I said, if you've enjoyed this episode, give us a like, consider subscribing, and hit that notification bell, and you will know when we upload our next one. So, from Fred the Cat, Abby the Dog, and me and my wife, we wish you a blessed day, and we hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. We're ready to eat these, so we'll see y'all next time. Enjoy. Bye now. Save a place for me. I'll be